After studying the various mystical religions and different teachings and systems of mind stuff, one is impressed with the fact that they all have the same basic modus operandi, and that is through repetition. This brings us to the law of suggestion, through which all forces operating within its limits are capable of producing phenomenal results. It is the power of suggestion and auto-suggestion, your own to yourself, or hetero-suggestion coming to you from outside sources that starts the machinery into operation or causes the subconscious mind to begin its creative work. And right here is where the affirmations and repetitions play their part. It's the repetition of the same chant the same incantation, the same affirmations that lead to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. In the Depression years, we saw this same suggestive force working overtime. Day after day, we heard the expression, times are hard, business is poor, the banks are failing, prosperity hasn't a chance, and wild stories about business failures on every hand until they became the national chant. Millions believed that prosperous days would never return. Hundreds, yes, thousands of strong-willed men went down under the constant hammering, the continuous tap-tapping of the same fear vibratory thoughts. Money, always sensitive, runs to cover when fear suggestions begin to circulate, and business failures and unemployment follow quickly. We heard thousands of stories of bank failures, huge concerns going to the wall, and people believed them readily and acted accordingly. Success or failure in business is caused more by mental attitude rather than by mental capacities. Let's consider charms, talismans, amulets, good luck pieces, four-leaf clovers, old horseshoes, a rabbit's foot, and countless other trinkets which thousands of people believe in. By themselves, they are inanimate, harmless objects without power. But people breathe life into them by thinking they do have power, even though the power isn't in them per se. The power comes only with the believing, which alone makes them effective. In assuming the virtue, you are assuming via your imagination. But here we must make a distinction between daydreaming and a true mental picture or proper use of the imagination. When you employ your imagination properly, you see yourself doing a thing and you go ahead and do it. It's the doing the thing you have pictured to yourself that brings it into actual existence. In this connection, think about the use of the magnifying glass. When properly focused, it will gather the light from the sun and concentrate it so that the heat will burn a hole in the object on which the rays are focused. It must be held steady before the heat power is developed, and so it is with the holding of the image or the mental picture. However, it is very difficult for the average person to concentrate for any length of time, to say nothing of holding on to a mental picture for any great period. You are constantly being swayed by what you read and hear, and as a result, the coordinating part of this creative force turns to gathering together all these scattered elements in a focused mass, instead of devoting itself to making a clear and dynamic picture of your desire. Don't give anyone an inkling of what you desire. The truth is that when you talk about what you're going to do, you scatter your forces. You lose the close connection you have with the subconscious. Go and tell no man still holds true. The repetition will be the means of driving the suggestion deeply and firmly into the subconscious mind. 
It has been my observation that those who consciously use this science, as well as those who may be using it unconsciously, are people of tremendous energies, virtually human dynamos. They are people who not only use their imagination and hold strong beliefs and convictions, but they are great doers in action. And that brings me to this most important statement. Faith without action is dead. Sooner or later, there will come an intensity that will reveal the intensity of your thought. Emerson wrote that every man carries in his eyes the exact indication of his rank. Remember that your own gradation or position in life is marked by what you carry in your eyes. So develop eyes that say confidence. Often I have thought of this matter of desire and suggestion in connection with the planting of vegetable or flower seeds. Once the soil is prepared and the tiny seeds are placed in it, it only takes a short time until they begin to root and sprouts begin to appear. The moment they start upward through the soil in search of light, sunshine and moisture, obstacles mean nothing to them. They will push aside small stones or bits of wood and if they can't do that, they'll extend themselves and grow around them. So it can be with you and the suggestions you give to your subconscious mind. The results will be pure or complex depending upon the original seed and the attention which you give it. In other words, plant the right kind of seed and habitually feed it with strong affirmative thought always directed toward the same end. It will grow into a mighty force finding ways and means of overcoming all obstacles. We seldom realize how much our emotional vibrations affect others and how much we're affected by theirs. An extremely nervous person in a position of authority can put nearly every person associated with him into a nervous state. It's always important to remember that a negative person can raise havoc in an organization or a home. The same amount of damage can be done by a strong negative personality as good can be done by a positive one. When the two are pitted together against one another, the negative frequently becomes the more powerful. To get a better understanding of the effect of these suggestive vibrations, you need only to read your varying feelings when entering different offices or homes. The atmosphere which is the creation of the people living there, can be instantly detected as being upsetting, disturbing, tranquil, or harmonious. The vibrations set up by others affect us much more than we realize. We take on the characteristics of those with whom we are more or less constantly associated. If you want to remain a positive type, Avoid associating too much with anyone who has a negative or pessimistic personality. A person who desires riches must go where the riches are. Alone on a desert island, a man would probably have a tough time eking out a living to say nothing of trying to amass a fortune. The right mental attitude being properly attired, keeping your eyes straight ahead and fixed on your goal, throwing around you the proper aura, which is done by an act of your imagination or an extension of your personal magnetism, will work wonders. When man fully comprehends the great power of his mind and earnestly puts it to work, he will have dominion over this earth and everything on it. You yourself have this inner spark, but it must be fanned until the fire is of white-hot intensity, and it must be constantly stoked, which you do by adding fuel, ideas, ideas, more ideas and action. I have tried to make plain how this power through belief can be developed 
and to take you up the ladder as far as you wish to go. It is necessary, though, to point out that it is easy to lose one's belief or faith. Thousands have risen to great heights of success only to stumble, roll, or fall to undreamed of depths. There are many weakening factors and influences, all suggestive in nature, which we, in unguarded moments, allow to slip into our subconscious minds. Once these influences begin their destructive work, they can undo all the good accomplished by our constructive forces. So step out in front, head toward the sun, keep facing it, and the dark shadows will not cross your path. I know that it is difficult for the average person who knows nothing of this subject to accept the idea that all is within but surely the most materialistic person must realize that as far as he himself is concerned, nothing exists on the outside plane unless he has knowledge of it or unless it becomes fixed in his consciousness. It is the image created in his mind that gives reality to the world outside of him. Happiness, sought by many and found by few, therefore is a matter entirely within ourselves. Our environment and the everyday happenings of life have absolutely no effect on our happiness except as we permit mental images of the outside to enter our consciousness. Happiness is wholly independent of position, wealth or material possessions. It is a state of mind which we ourselves have the power to control. And that control lies with our thinking. Emerson said, what is the hardest task in the world? To think. Obviously this is so, when one considers that most of us are victims of mass thinking and feed upon suggestions from others. We all know that the law of cause and effect is inviolable. Yet how many of us ever pause to consider its workings? The entire course of a man's life has many times been changed by a single thought, which coming to him in a flash became a mighty power that altered the whole current of human events. History is replete with the stories of strong-minded, resolutely willed individuals who steadfastly holding to their inner convictions have been able to inspire their fellow man and in the face of tremendous and determined opposition have literally created out of nothing great businesses, huge empires, and new worlds. They had no monopoly of thought power. You and every man and woman have it. All you have to do is use it. You will then become the person you envisage in your imagination. Know yourself, know your power, just believe that there is a genuine creative magic in believing, and magic there will be. For belief will supply the power which will enable you to succeed in everything you undertake. Back your belief with a resolute will, and you will become unconquerable. To become the person that you would like to be, you create a mental picture of your newly conceived self. And if you continue to hold it, 
The day will come when you are in reality that person. 